Good day, my crafting along buddies. This is Jennifer with Just Crafting Along. Welcome to my channel. Well, good day, my crafting along buddies, and welcome back. Today is going to be cinch day. I have missed my thermal cinch. I had kind of run out of things to do with my thermal cinch. I didn't want to keep on doing the same old, same old that everybody else is doing. Um, I could only make so many notebooks for me and my auntie. <laughs> so my auntie has a whole bunch of notebooks. I have a whole bunch of notebooks. I do have a couple craft projects in mind. So hopefully they work out. Hopefully this video goes out. So if you're seeing this video, that means it worked. If not, we'll scrub it and we'll start over. But I do want to say thank you so much for everyone who's joined lately. Um, I really appreciate all the love and support I've been getting. Um, I enjoy all the comments. So continue to interact with me. Continue to comment on my videos. I love um, chatting with everybody. I love hearing people's stories about their crafty adventures. And hopefully you enjoy seeing my projects and seeing my crafty adventures. And please invite all your family members. I would love to have a big old family that we could all discuss crafty adventures and have a great old time and spread the love. Also, feel free to give me any project ideas that you might want me to work on. So if you think that you might want to do a craft and you're like, oh, I don't want to go buy all the supplies, pass it on to me in the comments in one of my videos. I will be happy to, to explore some things because I do have a lot of projects lined up. Um, they're just slowly, slowly coming. So feel free to give me ideas of videos that you might want to see. I would be happy to um, try to get those videos arranged and possibly buy those projects if I don't already have them because I probably already have them. So I would be happy to kind of dive into anything that you guys might be interested in. So give me some ideas of what you might want to see. I would be happy to read your comments and I would be happy to try to do one of those projects. Um, I do have a couple more to buy or not to buy is coming out. So um, if you have any idea that you want to try a project, um, let me know. If you want to try a product, let me know and I'll see about um, possibly getting that product and trying it out. So with that being said, we're going to move on to our current project with our cinch. I'm in love with the cinch. I love it. I love it. I love it. So instead of doing, like I said, the, the, the notebook, we can only do so many notebooks. I don't want to do a recipe book. I haven't done anything. I thought about doing something kid related. I thought to myself, from doing daycare for 17 years, Jennifer, what was the problem that you had with not only your daycare, but with your own children? My children are 27 and 24. I currently have no grandkids. But when they're um, little kids, we always went somewhere with a ton of workbooks and coloring books. We had a backpack full of workbooks and coloring books. My children did not have one favorite workbook. My children did not have one favorite coloring book. They had several of each. Yes, it would only be one page colored in this one, but they had to have it. So what I did was I went to the dollar store because that was the cheapest place to find all of these. You wouldn't think that these were from the dollar store, but all this was from the dollar store. Um, I'm sorry, I call it the dollar store, but it's the Dollar Tree. It was $1.25. These workbooks were going for $2.99 at Joann's, and I, that's about the only place I looked. It was, um, And these were like five bucks. And this is Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. I mean, so this was only $1.25. So if you're going to be looking for coloring books and crayons and workbooks, go look at your lo local Dollar Tree. This was only $1.25 each. Didn't spend very much on things that are going to be kind of pushed aside and only looked at here and there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be taking these apart and I'm going to make small workbooks. What I suggest to do, if that's a good idea to you and this project works out just fine for me and you guys like it, I would have your children sit down because you know you have to buy two of this because your children, if Danielle has this book. I know Troy wants this book. It's just, that's just life. That's my kids' names too, by the way. So if Danielle has this book, I know her brother Troy is gonna want this book and they're gonna argue about it. So now I have to buy two of the same books or I could sit them down and say, hey, pick out your favorite pages from this book. We're gonna put it in your own book for you to have. So then they can't fight over the book because they both have the same book if that makes sense. So what we're gonna do is I would have your children sit down and I would have them pick out their favorite pages from each book that you have and make yourself a small book to take with you on car rides to grandma's house on vacation, away at the lake house for the weekend, away for the weekend, at grandma's house for the weekend, or grandma's house at nighttime after school, or 
daycare center or wherever they go after school or spend the night or anything like that. So I would have them sit down, pick out their favorite pages, and what we're gonna do is make a book. We're gonna make a book with all of this combined together. And all I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna rip them out because I want my pages to be one page. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it apart where the staples are, and then I'll probably cut them in half with my trimmer, and then I'll come back on. So I believe I can do that with all of these. I'm not for sure about my coloring book. I might have to slice that one open and just slice right down here, but look how good it's bound. <laughs> See, now that you have a thermal sense, you're gonna be like, oh, I know how that's bound. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut these right out of here. And so my only suggestion would be have your kids pick out their favorite pages and have them make their own book. The thermal sense is something that families can do together. So this would be a great project for while you're making dinner, for your kids to sit at the kitchen table and say, hey, you go through all your workbooks, we're gonna make a special book for grandma's house and I want you to go ahead and pick out the pages you want. And maybe they can just put little tabs of paper in each one, you know, or mark it at the corner with a little check mark or however you want them to do it. But I would have them sit down and pick out all the papers they want, go in together, and then you can take the book apart for them and then they can put their pages inside their book and you guys can make a family project together. So I was able to cut out all my worksheet pages and I was also able to cut out all my coloring book pages. 25 workbook pages and 20 coloring book pages. So that leaves me enough room for my cover and my spine a little bit extra. So I don't quite have 50 pages, but I have 45 pages. So I would have room for cardboard backing and all that. So I'll explain that all in a minute. But let's go ahead and work on our cover. We're gonna do those workbook pages in a second. I'm gonna work on my cover. I thought this would be cute for the cover. This is gonna be the front, this is gonna be the back, and this is gonna be the spine. Um, so I'm gonna cut this out and this will go over the top right here. And then I'm also gonna do some cardboard. Um, I keep all my cardboard out of any kind of packaging because it's nice and thin. Um, this, package, this cardboard came out of my job tickets. I did a video on organization and then I kept this out of those job tickets and so all I'm going to do is cut this down to the size of my coloring book because my coloring book's a little bit bigger than my um, workbooks. So all I'm going to do is cut this down to my coloring book and I already did the first one so you can see that it will cover just nicely and all I'm going to do is use this as a template. I will draw a mark here and a mark here. I will cut this and then I'm also going to cut this down to this size. I'm going to put this on top of this to make it hard like a hard cover. And that's gonna be my front, and this is gonna be our back. So let's get started on that. I just wanted to give you an idea of what we were gonna be doing. So all I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna set these aside, and we're gonna work on these. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line these up, and I'm going to mark here, and I'm gonna mark right here. And that's just gonna give me my cut lines. So I'm gonna get out my guillotine from Crapper's Companion. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line this line up right even with this little silver bar. I absolutely love my guillotine. It's, I like it, it's um, good. I'm gonna give it a slice. And then we're just gonna line up this line right here. Even with this little, there's a little tiny metal, you wanna line it up with that edge because that's what your cut's gonna be. You're just gonna put it against flush. You're gonna make sure that it's all flush against here. Make sure that line is right. You're gonna put your fingers here on this guard, and then you're just gonna pull it down. Very sharp, so just be careful. And there we go. Those match. So now what we're gonna work on is our front cover. And this isn't very thick cardstock. I mean, it's not as thin as regular cardstock, but it's not thick. Um, it's maybe medium weight. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out where I want to put this. And I, want, I think I want this corner on here. I think I want this to be the corner that we use. So all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna leave it here like this. I'm gonna make sure it's where I want it. Give it a good push. Yeah, and I'm just gonna flip it over. Make sure that this corner is flush. Make sure that is good. And then I'm just gonna mark it. So I'm gonna do right here. Right there. 
what we're gonna do right here. There we go. There we go. We're gonna cut that with our guillotine also. And then I'm just gonna turn it around and do it with the same size. So this should be good. Perfect, so it lines up good. And all I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and get out my double-sided adhesive sheets. And I'm gonna cover this and cut it down. So all I gotta do is put this piece of paper on top of there. I don't have to do any kind of gluing or strips or anything like that. So let's go ahead and cut our back sheet because our back sheet's gonna be the same also. We'll go this end. there so both these should be the same so I just wanted to show you that these are double-sided adhesive sheets there's 10 pieces and I ended up using a coupon and I got it for $11.99 but they're regular only $14.99 so it's a little I mean, it's not that much. I mean, for 15 bucks. And this is the last of me. I think I got it in 2020, um, August of 2022. And you can tell I've used it multiple times. So um, they work really well. I like them a lot. So I'll continue to get those um, because I don't use them that much. I only use them when I have big, big projects. I'll continue to get this instead of buying it online somewhere. I like to kind of support my stores when I can. Um, I don't buy that very much, but I'll buy it again from Michaels just in case you're interested. So now what we're gonna do is cross our fingers. That's what we're gonna do. Cause Jennifer gets nothing straight. So this girl is horrible at getting stuff straight. So let me see if I can get my... So now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to fry up one of these corners. Again, this is my favorite tool in the whole entire world. I got two of them, I get for $1.25. I did get it when it was a dollar. But for $1.25 at um, the Dollar Tree, you get two of them for $1.25. Best pokey tool I've ever used in my whole entire crafting career. It's my go-to. I have several of them from different companies, but this is my favorite. I want to say this is my... So let me go ahead and clip this off. We're going to hold our breath. We're going to hope and pray I can get this on right. So we're gonna go right here. We'll put down this corner. Give it a good push. And then I'm just gonna kind of peel a little bit at a time, just until I know I got it straight. Once I got it straight down here, which I do, we're good. And then we're just gonna smooth it down and go up. There we go, we got it. Sure there's no air bubbles and that my that my um, paper is gonna stick very well to it. Okay, so that should be good. So we're just gonna pull up this corner again. All we're gonna do is expose this little corner right here and cut this off. That way, if I lay my paper down or if I sneeze or if I look away or something catches my attention, I don't actually stick my paper to the whole thing and it gets stuck and lost. So I recommend that you um, Open is this exposed one little corner. You want to get this lined up as best as possible. We're gonna go right in that edge right there. I'm gonna put it down right there. That is stuck. So now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up this corner, and as long as I can get this bottom to go on, then we should be good. As long as this is straight right here, then the rest of our paper is gonna be straight. So that's good. There we go. It's very sticky. So there we go. You just want to run the air bubbles out. Oh, perfect. Oh my goodness, I didn't have to hold my breath on that one. So we're just gonna make sure this is adhered very well because we want this to stick because this is the cover to our book. This is the front pouch to our book. So we want to make sure that's gonna stick and there's no air bubbles and there isn't. Look how stinking cute that is. Woo. Okay, so now we're gonna do that to this section. 
So this is gonna be the back, so we're gonna do the same process that we did with this, so we're gonna do it to this one, and I'm gonna do that one off camera. Okay, so these two pieces are done. This is our front and our back, like I said. They both line up very well. So all is good. So we're gonna set that aside also. Now we're gonna work on our spine. I'm going to use this one just to measure, and this is the one that you came with your um, bundle package from HSN, or if you have another one laying around, I'm just going to use this for the guideline to see how wide I want mine, and it, that it's going to fit, and where to put my glue strip. You see that there's little score lines right here next to your, um, right next to your glue strip, and that's what I want to kind of see. I don't want this to be that big, so I think what I'm going to do, that's good numbers, I think it is gonna fold okay so I went no I'm not the best person to be doing math I'm not the best person to be doing things straight but I'm trying so I'm gonna mark this right here this is where we're gonna cut right there and then we're gonna score right here and we're gonna score right here and that's where we're gonna put our so I'm gonna cut right here and then we're gonna score right here. We're gonna put our glue strip right in the middle of that. So let's go ahead and put this aside. Let's get line right here and cut that. And then I'm gonna score right down these two lines right here. So I'm gonna score down this first one. I'm gonna close that so I don't cut my arm off. Very sharp, so make sure that you pay attention to that. I'm gonna score right down this one right here. Oops, don't push too hard. And then we're going to move this over and we're going to score right down this one right here. We're going to score. There we go. And that's going to give us our spine. See right there? And that's just going to give us just a little bit over, which is what I want. So, and this is going to sculpt our spine. And to make sure when you go to put it on that your numbers are right in the back. So you want to make sure that your numbers are facing up the right way. And this is going to go right here. And it's going to score right across that right there. Perfect. Where the two-way tape was, from here to here is what I cut. And then I just found out where these two score lines were, and I matched up on my piece of paper, and I scored. That is the easiest way to do it until you run out of these. And then I'd have to give you math. So let's go ahead and put this on. This came with your kit or any glue strip that you might have. You can use. I'm going to go ahead and put this on, then I'll put my double sided adhesive on in a second. And all I'm going to do again is I'm going to take a little bit out. Make sure it's straight. And I'm not going to take all the tape off because I think I need to snip it. And then we're just gonna clip it off right here. So again, all I did was put it down in between my two score lines and all I did was follow the score lines that were on this piece of cardstock and the one that came with it. And all I did, I knew that I want my spine to be in between here. I don't want it to be as big as the paper, I want it to be this wide. So all I did was cut right along this line and then I scored right where the, their glue strip was. Make sure that your, your um, glue stick is right in the middle of that score line. The next thing we're going to do is we're double-sided adhesive right along this edge right here. This one. Yeah, I can use two strips of that. What we're going to do is lay this right here. And this is going to stick to your um, cover on your back end front cover on the sides. The glue is gonna, this part is gonna hold in your pages and this part is gonna hold your cover to your spine. We're just gonna put this one right in this corner. We're gonna follow that side all the way up. Get as close to the edge as possible. I'm just going to put this right back on top of it, just to kind of keep our fingers off of it. There we go. Here's that. And that. Okay. I 
do is you want to make your spine as big as you want and you want to make um, score marks right where your glue stick is going to lie. So this is your binding glue and you want that to lie in your your score lines and you want this to score so it goes around the edge of your book so it actually this sticks to your cover and the back side this will go the front and this will go the back there and now what we're going to do is we're going to go through our pages we're going to and you can actually put a cover sheet on here that says jennifer's workbook jennifer's coloring book jennifer's project jennifer's book or this book belongs to um you're, you're welcome to put a cover page in here which i think i might just slide one in here just to have it so now that's gonna be our cover page and now we're gonna want to mix up our pages a little bit so maybe go like this so it gives them a little bit different pages to look at and it's not just all the same thing and then we'll throw a coloring page in there maybe we'll throw a couple coloring pages in there too so let's give let's do one blues clues so we'll do this. We'll do this one, this one. We'll do another. We'll do a random coloring page. And another one. And then we'll do a blues clues. And then we'll do another one. However you want to put it for your child or even have your child put it together. However they want to do it and however you want to do it. So let me put a coloring page. So it's whatever gets them to want to look at some kind of workbook. Um, you always got to reward them, I say. So if you do a workbook page, I'll let you color. Up to you however you want to do it, but um, if you can let your child, this would be great for you and your child to do together. So all I did was made it kind of fun. It's not all the same thing, but look at the difference that this makes. So. This is something fun for them to pick out the ones that they want to do. I'm also going to leave this here. And you can have your child put their initials on it. They can draw on it. They can put their name on it. And you can have them decorate the front. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to put this on top. I'm going to put this one on top of this one. So let me recap real quick. Um, I'm going to turn my stitch on. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my stitch on so I can warm up. So let's go ahead and recap. This is our front of our book. If you open it up, it's, I'm going to leave this bare just in case you want to give your children stickers. And they can put their stickers on here. They can draw on this. They can write their name on this. They can doodle on this. And there's no paper taken away from that or hurting it or anything like that. So these are all of our pages. And then I'm doing the same thing with the back cover. I'm going to leave it open in this way. They can write on the back. They can say, you know finish the book on this date or you know they can put whatever they want on these two pages put paper on this but I think it would be nicer to have that ability our, our cinch is warm the ability to have them decorate this how they wanted so I'm gonna go ahead and leave that um, exposed so we're gonna go ahead and put this right here so we're gonna go ahead and do that we're gonna make sure this is totally all the paper is down at the bottom and all I do is kind of tap it and you want every single piece to get down to that bottom. And you want to look, and it does look like everything is there because you want that glue to go on there. And all we're going to do is going to put this binder clip right here. That is going to hold our project together. Why? And you can see that this is going to glue very well. And we want to make sure that this is enough. And I think it is. Put that there like that. We're going to expose this one side. We're gonna do is we're gonna lay this book right on the end of that paper right there. And we're gonna fold this up and over, giving it a good crease. And we're going to release this paper right here. So what a fun way to get your kids to get excited about making their own workbook and their own coloring book. This is a great way to get your kids involved and excited about doing something um, educational. And we're just going to fold that over, give it a good push, and we're going to fold it over. 
Now I did rip my, this is my fault. I, I pushed too hard when I score, was scoring. So we're gonna go ahead and get on this back side. We're gonna give it a good press. Look at how good that's gonna bind. That is gonna be perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and lift this up and we're gonna put this in here and we're gonna hit the timer button. It is flashing. It's gonna take about two minutes for that to, to melt. So in the meantime, let me go, go ahead and go over the things that I picked out to embellish the front. I had this number pop out from Crafter's Companion. It's called Pop Out Individual Numbers. And it's supposed to pop out like this, but all I did was when I made it, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut even with the line where it cuts it out. And then we're gonna trim it ourselves. These are my big number dies. I don't have any bigger number dies, so I wanted to use these ones. So we're just gonna make do with what we got. So there's our pop out, and all we're gonna do is continue and follow this curve. We're gonna fussy cut this curve. There we go. And then we're gonna fussy cut this curve right here. Why it's called fussy cutting, I don't know. It's not really that much of a fuss. So there's that. So this is what the dies look like. Really cute. It's a really cute set. I really like it. And the numbers are nice and big. So let me go ahead and put this in here. And as soon as that is done, we have to wait five minutes for it to cure. And then I will be back on and we'll put on our numbers and we'll be all done. Okay, let's go ahead and finish up our front of our book. I'm gonna put this one right here. I'm going to line it up right with that one. There we go. That one's there. So we're going to go ahead and put this one right here. And we're going to use this line right here to make sure it's straight. And we're going to put our three right here. Go down right about there. One, two, three. Look how cute that is. So this is our book. And like I said, it, it looks it looks really good. So here's all the pages. It bound really good. Again, if you don't feel like it's stuck good. Then go ahead and reheat it and then give it a tap. But this is in there really good. This page, oh, it's in there. It just cut crooked. So you can tell where I cut it crooked. So just be careful when you cut. But other than that, it's all in there. And it, it held really good. So. So that is our finished project. So this is just an ideal of th things that you could do with your children. You could take apart their current coloring books and make a coloring book and one book goes with you on vacation. You don't have five or six different kinds of books in your book bag. One book goes with them or this book can stay at grandma's house or this book can stay in the car when you go to maybe one of your kids are in sports and your young kid needs something to do and this book can stay in the car. Um, so you have that with you when you go to those sporting events. This book can stay at grandma's house. This book can stay, if you take your kids to work, um, this can stay at your drawer at work and you have something for your children to do. So it's the next day. I let my book um, bind for a whole day. I like to do that. I like my books to bind overnight before I really give them a good opening. Um, I just want that um, binding glue to, to cure. So it did really well. Um, I only lost two pages. I knew I was going to lose two pages. I thought it was going to be one, but it's two. Um, I did have that in the video earlier that I was going to lose a page. And it's not because of doing anything wrong. It was my cutting. So let me go ahead and show you the book. Um, it, it looks really good. Let me find the pages that are. So you can see that it, it's bound really well. You can kind of open it and it's not going anywhere. Um, these are the pages right here. You can see that it's in there and it's not coming out. But look at, I told you, I cannot get nothing straight. So here's my cut line. 
you can see i don't know how these ones got cut like that but you can see where it was straight this is not coming out i am trying it's perforated too i have perforated pages so it's not coming out this is the other page and you can see again how wonky i cut that <laughs> So, told you, I cannot get nothing straight. But you can see the things next to it, and this one's bound very well. It's not coming. I'm trying. It's not coming out. So, it's in there. So, make sure that your lines are straight. Make sure all your papers are down together, even if you have to kind of just tap them by themselves just to get them all the way down to the bottom. Make sure everything is flush. I, but that is the only problem I see. These two papers were together yesterday. I showed you guys this one that it was cut. This one was cut wonky and um, at the beginning of the video. So I knew that one was going to fall out. I just didn't know Donald was having a problem too. But those are the only two. And you can tell that middle is, it's in there. I'm pulling really hard. And it's not coming. So, and all my other pages look great. I mean, look at this. You can fold open. You can write on it. Um, you know, you can write the, the answers. You can draw. Um, it's, it's staying open. Um, I have no problems. These pages are perforated. So let me try that while we are got these two pages. So I wanted to try to see how it would rip out being perforated. Let me see if I can get it to start. So I think it, oh, there it goes. So that's, and you can see, look at how good that was glued in there. So this was my error, not the, the binding error. So that's in there. You can see the paper that's stuck. You can see that it's in there very, very well. So other than that, it looks so good. And that's in there. That's, I don't have any problems at all. You can see that my papers are down in there. So what's this mean? This means that we went from, let me get rid of these. And you can see my wonky lines. You can see, look <laughs> mind that look at this cut job tell you not I, I cut cricket i just i am not a straight cutter and i don't i used a razor blade to go inside the, the book so i wonder if i just cut those pages out by themselves and wasn't paying attention um and i didn't go back over it with my cutter so now i know if i cut out coloring book pages i'm gonna have to kind of give them a chop at you so they're they're straight so What's this mean? This means we made this adorable book that can go into a child's backpack, stay in the car, go into your work backpack, go into grandma and grandpa's backpack, go into big brother, big sister's backpack, um, whoever. Whoever is for it can go. It's just one little book. They can carry it. They can carry it by themselves. They don't have to have all these little books anymore. We went from this, this big pile of books to this. That's it. So not kid related what could you do with this if you're a realtor or someone that makes a lot of appointments and you want to make yourself a march calendar you just put all of march in this and this is all you're carrying around if a regular pl um, planner write down all your information make yourself a side planner that way if you lose this you still have your master at the office that's big and bold so here's my planner i just got look at the difference who wants to carry so let's to open to march so here's my March calendar. I'm opening it. What would you rather be carrying around in your work bag? And if someone steals your work bag or you lose it or you leave it somewhere, all of your appointments are still in your master back at the office or back at home. So lots of ideals. You can make this into anything that you want. Um, I absolutely adore my thermal scent. The potential is endless. You can do so many things. You can make a, a family work schedule and give them to everyone for like two or three months. You could make your kids um, a chore chart or errands that they have to run or um, things that they're responsible for. You can make a family book. You could do so many things with this. You could, it's just endless. It's just totally endless of what you could do. This is something that inspires you to get out your cinch and to go ahead and think out of the box and do something creative and do something with your children, whether it be your children, grandchildren, your nieces, your nephews, whoever. Just get them involved in something crafty and have fun. So hopefully you like what you saw today. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, lots of love and I'll see y'all soon. Thank you for watching, my Craft Along Buddies. If you loved what you saw today, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, lots of love and see you soon.